From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Mississauga, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband who passed away four years ago for the return of her children and grandchildren to their faith in God, for the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them, and for world peace. Our thanks to our donor for making it possible for tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada and around the world to begin a new week with this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Convert us, O Lord our Savior, and instruct our minds by heavenly teaching that we may, be bent, we may benefit from the works of Lent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not steal, you shall not deal falsely, and you shall not lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor, you shall not steal, and you shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall feel, fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment and the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over the centuries, Lent has taken on a variety of meanings. Initially, it was seen as a period for the final preparation of adults who were to be baptized at the Easter Vigil. Later, as adult baptism became increasingly rare, Lent took on a somewhat different meaning. Its focus was more on the penance and the ongoing conversion of those who had been baptized as infants. People now committed themselves to some additional work of piety or of charity to make up, as it were, in some small way for their past failings. In this context, Lent was seen as a privileged time for the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. Lent today has become more like it was in the early church. The RCIA program, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, has deepened our awareness of Easter, and especially of the Easter Vigil, as a privileged time for baptism. It is, after all, through faith and baptism that we enter for the first time into the death of Christ in order to rise with him to newness of life. For those of us who were already baptized, the renewal of baptismal promises at the Easter Masses provides an opportunity to experience again that gift 
of life, that gift of new life, which is at the heart of the Paschal mystery, the mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ. Lent and Easter are all but inseparable. To think of the one is to think of the other. Easter celebrates the life-giving, life-transforming mystery at the heart of our faith, while Lent calls us to an ever deeper renewal of that faith and of our love as we prepare to enter once again into the mystery of Christ in the Easter liturgy. The English word used for the liturgical season we've just begun as an unusual history. It comes from an old English word meaning length or lengthening. It points to the fact that during Lent in the northern hemisphere, the sun mounts up into the sky. The days become gradually longer and new growth of various kinds begins to appear. As unusual as the choice of such a word might be for the period we know as Lent, it is more than appropriate. Throughout Lent, we have a sense of moving towards spring and Easter and the different forms of new life they represent and offer to us. The emphasis at Easter is on life and newness, on joy and celebration. Many churches signal this, impact, this aspect of Easter by the presence in them during the Easter season of more candles and lights and by the presence of flowers of various kinds. As a period of growth, Lent comes to a climax in the celebration of our ever-deepening life in Christ, which is at the heart of Easter. The renewal or conversion so central to Lent is both religious and moral, as Jesus made clear in the way he answered the question about the greatest commandment by citing not one but two, love of God and love of neighbor. At the deepest level, they are not two loves, but two sides of one love. To pray to God, to meditate on his gifts, to seek to know him and to do his will, such things are part of being a mature Christian. In order for them, however, to be authentic, they must be accompanied by a way of life that flows from them and which in turn draws us ever more deeply into the mystery of God. Today's gospel contains Matthew's account of the last example of Jesus' public preaching. The context is that of judgment. The risen Jesus takes his place on a throne in front of which are gathered all the nations of the world. Like a shepherd, Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, those whom he will welcome into his kingdom and those whom he will send away. The criterion by which the judgment is to be made is what we have done or not done for others, especially for those in need. A central theme in the Old Testament, one found in the Mosaic Law and in the teaching of the prophets. In them, reference is made repeatedly to widows and orphans and to those referred to as the strangers living in our midst. Such people are seen as representing all those who are particularly vulnerable, including the poor, the sick, and the homeless. It is this broader list to which Jesus refers, but even it is by no means exhaustive. The people whom Jesus mentions stand for everyone in need, whether that need be a physical, of psychological, economic, or social nature. Christian morality has a religious dimension. Genuine love of neighbor, love that reaches out to those in need and acts on their behalf, is inseparable from love of God. What is new in what Jesus says in today's reading is the fact that what we do or fail to do to others, we do or fail to do for him. We may be unaware of it, but loving and serving others, our neighbor, our brothers and sisters, those in need, we are loving and serving Jesus. In loving him, 
we can't help but love God. Lent is an ideal time to read, to meditate on, and to allow a text like today's gospel to challenge us to examine our conscience, especially in regard to the way we treat one another. Lent invites us to see and to be touched by the needs that are all around us and to do what we can to counteract them. The more we are able to do that, the more will we be ready to renew our baptismal commitments at Easter. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs and the needs of our world. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those seeking a deeper awareness of God in everyday life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those suffering from poverty, hunger, and homelessness, that those who can will reach out to them in their need, let us pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis and for his efforts to renew the life of the Church with the current synod on synodality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For peace in our families, our country, and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly and the chronically ill, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we join with Pope Francis, who has entrusted the people of Ukraine to the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God. And we ask Our Lady, through her powerful intercession, to open hearts so that anger, resentment, and division may start to be healed and that any further escalation of unnecessary violence may be avoided. For this we pray to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Bless you God. God. By the mingling of this water and why become partakers of his divinity. We became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God for you. Gracious God, we have received the sacrifice of you. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for praise and glory of his name. For our God and the Lord of his holy church. May this devout oblation be acceptable to you, O Lord, and by your power it may sanctify our manner of life and gain for us your conciliation and pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that in receiving your sacrament, we may experience help in mind and body, so that kept safe in both, we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.